Hi everyone! Last time I showed you how to make Swiss meringue buttercream. Today I'll show you how to make Italian meringue buttercream. Italian meringue buttercream is the most stable buttercream out of the three, American, Swiss, and Italian, because we cook the egg whites with a sugar syrup. That's why making it more the most stable. Swiss meringue buttercream and Italian meringue buttercream have basically the same ingredients, sugar, egg whites, and butter. The only difference is that with Swiss meringue buttercream, we cook the eggs and the sugar over a double boiler. And with Italian meringue buttercream, we cook the sugar into a syrup and add that to the egg whites. Like I always say with these mixtures, I use ratios instead of an exact recipe. When you use a ratio, it's easier to scale a recipe up or down instead of just trying to memorize how many grams of butter, how many grams of sugar. When you use ratios, ang dali dali lang. With, like what I said, with the full SMBC, with the SMBC, with full SMBC is one to two ratio. With SMBC, it can be one to two, one to 2.5, or one to three. The ratios will depend on the type of and brand of butter that you're using. I find that different brands of butter, for example, if you use a butter that has a higher water content, you need more of it for the recipe. When you use a butter, for example, with an 82% or higher, like the European style butters, you need less in the recipe. So just play around with the ratios, see which one you like the most, and it's so easy to make adjustments. So let's start. To make Italian meringue buttercream, we need one part egg whites. So for this particular demonstration, I'm using 125 grams of egg whites. But please, like I said, with the ratios, you can use any weight as long as you follow the same ratio. So hindi kailangan siyang 125 all the time. So just remember, one part egg whites, two parts sugar. So two parts, one, 125 times two is 250 grams. And for the butter, we are, um, I'm using for this particular brand of butter that I'm using, this is unsalted butter, always use unsalted butter. We're doing 2.6. So to get 2.6, 125, which is the amount of egg whites times 2.6, that's our butter, which is 325. So that's all you have to remember. One, two, 2.6. You can be, you can make it 2.5, you can make it times three. Again, depending on the butter brand that you're using. And enough water for the syrup. I don't use a specific amount of water because it evaporate lang naman siya as we cook the syrup. Later on, I'll show you just how much water I use. Okay. And lastly, before I forget, a little bit of salt to cut down the sweetness of the buttercream. And you can use any flavoring you like. You can use vanilla, you can use coffee extract, you can use lemon extract. So for today, I'm using a uh, vanilla paste. And for the equipment, of course, we need a mixer. I suggest using a stand mixer for this purpose instead of using a hand mixer, just to be on the safe side. We're gonna need both a whisk and a paddle attachment, a spatula, a candy thermometer. It's important that you use a candy thermometer. Don't just use any thermometer because we're gonna be heating the syrup at a high temperature and yung therm ordinary thermometers behind you nila kayang handle. And also a stove top and a pot. So let's start. We're gonna add our sugar to our pot and just enough water to cover the sugar. I don't measure my water for syrups because it's gonna evaporate naman during the cooking process of the sugar. Some people, they measure, I don't. So I just eyeball it. When it looks like wet sand, pag basa na yung sugar, then that's how I know I have the right amount. See? It looks like wet sand. Don't add any more than this because it's more difficult to cook the syrup to evaporate the water. We're going to put this on a stove top 
and we're gonna heat it up to 120 degrees Celsius or 250 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're gonna heat this up. To quickly dissolve the sugar, I'm gonna do a figure eight motion. This way, so I won't have any splatters on the side. You say when you have sugar crystals on the sides of the pot, um, it's gonna cause a chain reaction and the rest of your syrup will crystallize. So to avoid that, avoid any splatters. Once that's dissolved and it's boiling, I'm gonna add my candy thermometer. Our sugar is boiling. I'm gonna add my candy thermometer. We're gonna heat it up to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it reaches 220, we're gonna start whipping our egg whites and we're gonna keep cooking the sugar until it reaches 250 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we add that to our egg whites when our egg whites are in stiff peak stage, okay? And so I'm, I'm gonna show that to you later on. So I have here my egg whites. Our syrup is almost at 220, so I'm gonna start whipping the egg whites just a little bit at low speed just to break up the proteins. I'm gonna start increasing the speed. We're now at medium high speed. So, so our syrup is at 220. I'm gonna set the mixer to max and whip that twice until stiff feet safe. Our syrup is ready, it's at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Our egg whites are ready. Immediately pour the syrup over the egg whites in a thin stream on medium speed. Make sure that the beater is not hitting the sugar syrup. Otherwise, it'll splatter everywhere. Here we have our egg white, our meringue. Um, it's whisking. It's still very hot. So when do you add the butter? And same with the Swiss meringue buttercream. My method is I add all of the butter instead of doing it a little bit at a time to bring down the temperature and you won't have a soupy mess. And I have here cold butter. It has to be cold, but at the same time, it's still um, uh, malleable. So our meringue is stiff. We're gonna take a closer look and then I'm gonna start adding the butter. Our meringue is about 30, 40 degrees Celsius. That's doable, it's not too hot. I can start adding my cold butter. Okay, make sure you add cold butter and we're, we're gonna add half of it. Give it a little bit of, um, beat it a little bit and then add the rest. I'm not gonna do it a little bit at a time because uh, we're trying to bring down the temperature of the meringue so I don't wanna wait. And I don't want to run my mixer for that long waiting for it to cool. Because it's not the mixer. So this is what I do, okay? So our, um, it's a little bit warm to the touch, but not too hot. So I'm gonna start it up and start adding um, half or all of the butter. It depends. Depends the same you end. So this is meant to cool the shot, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna do half first. If it's too hot, I'm gonna do all of the butter. Okay, I'm gonna start adding half of it. Again, the ratio is one, two, 2.6. However, feel free to make adjustments depending on how you like it. If you like it more buttery, add more butter, up, up to three times. If you like it less buttery and lighter in color, add up to two times butter. We're gonna keep beating this. As you can see, at the moment, our, our uh, buttercream looks curdled. When you get to this point, just keep beating and it will start to emulsify and 
um, get smoother. Mas smooth na yung uh, buttercream natin when we gave it more time to emulsify. I'm now going to switch to the paddle attachment to get rid of the excess air bubbles created by our whisk because I like my buttercream smooth. So just to show you, this, this is our buttercream. See, it's very light. It's very light and it's very fluffy. If you want to get rid of the air bubbles more, um, you're going to keep, keep running the mixer for 10 minutes on low speed. That should get rid of the air bubbles. Here's our finished buttercream ratio. It's much lighter than the Swiss meringue buttercream. Um, Obviously, if you want a more enhanced butter flavor, you can add up to three times the amount of butter. Again, the ratio is 1 to 2.6. One part egg whites, two parts uh, sugar, and 2.6 parts of butter. With these ratios, you have a very light Italian meringue buttercream. But if you want, you know, a more, a stiffer one, Feel free to add more butter. So we're gonna start, we're gonna try piping with this just to show you. Meron na namang magtatanong sa atin, is it stable? You can't compare buttercream to non-dairy whipped topping. Non-dairy whipped topping, they came up with that because Usually, ginagamit siya in countries where, with with you know hot climates like the Philippines, but the rest of the world they use buttercream. Even in um, hotter states in the U.S., they use buttercream just because it's more delicious. It is because yung non dairy whipped topping it's just vegetable fats and emulsifiers and sugar and water with buttercream. It's very versatile in flavor. It's very versatile. It tastes better. It tastes so much better. Um, it's so easy to pipe. And at the same time, you can flavor it with so many different flavor variations. So let's try piping with this to show you. See? It's very, very light. Um, the black specks you'll see that's from the vanilla paste that I used. See, very sharp in Poka Pipe. Nya. Even if I do this, it doesn't move. Kahit saan kayo magbunta, buttercream will melt under heat. So, if you're lagi nagtatanong, is it stable? Uh, what do you mean by is it stable? You, if you mean that will it melt, butter will melt no matter what happens. It's just how butter is, okay? So obviously, buttercream will melt. If you keep the cake in the chiller and you don't leave it at room temperature for hours and hours hour and hours at a time, your cake will be fine. Your cupcakes will be fine, okay? But if you ask me, I would highly recommend any of the buttercream variations just because it tastes better than non-dairy whipped cream. That is my personal opinion. In, in a future video, I'll show you how I flavor my buttercreams, different flavor variations to show you how versatile it is because, you know, fat is a good flavor carrier. So 
when you add other flavors to it, it just enhances it and mas harap siya. Okay? Um, before I forget, let's try. Let's taste it. I already added a little bit of salt to this and um, vanilla paste. Mm. It's very soft. It's very light. It has, um, it's buttery, but not too buttery. If you want a more pronounced butter flavor, you can add up to three times the amount of butter. So this ratio, 2.6, it's just perfect for me because I don't want to buttery. Although I love butter, don't get me wrong. Next up, we'll be making Russian buttercream, German buttercream, ermine frosting, which is like a buttercream, but it's cooked. Um, it has flour in it, and which is perfect for red velvet cakes. And that's how you make Italian meringue buttercream. If you have any questions, post in the comments below. Please follow my other um, pages on YouTube at Jamie Gardino Cake Design, on Instagram at Jamie Gardino Cake Design, on TikTok at JG Cake Design, and Facebook, Jamie, just search for Jamie Gardino Cake Design. So if you have any questions related to the video, please post them on the comments below. If you have other questions that are related to baking, I have a thread on my Facebook page. The first thing you'll see, post your questions there. Because if you send me, sometimes I don't see all of your messages because I get a lot of messages. So I might not be able to read them and respond to every single one of them. And it's better when you post your questions so everybody else can see my, my answers, okay? Until next time, thank you for watching.